This curious piece of work or engineering, when it first crossed, and why it even crossed, the high banks of the south end of the gorge, it has to do with railroad engineering and the Erie Railroad, which is a pioneer railroad before the Civil War. When we, we were canal happy in western New York, the railroads first raised their heads at this time, and the Erie was a pioneer coming along the southern tier uh, through Binghamton. I'm not going to steal any more of Chris's thunder about railroad systems, engineering, building, or the viaduct. It's your show, Chris Costello. All right, I wanted to thank everybody for having me. Uh, as Nels was saying, yes, uh, you know, Erie Railroad was formed and this bridge was, the original bridge, excuse me, was built before the Civil War. Uh, to touch on what he was mentioning, uh, the reason why this bridge was built, uh, Erie, although they were a pioneering railroad, they had a bit of a major goof. Uh, they built from New York City to the Great to Lake Erie. Uh, now, you know what we know now. If you were going to build a railroad, you'd build from New York City to Buffalo. If you were going to build to the Great Lakes or to Cleveland, uh, what the Erie Railroad did was they focused on Dunkirk. <laughs> uh, so they got to Dunkirk and all of a sudden they realized, we messed up. So this bri no, the original bridge and this line was built to cut between basically Hornell up to Buffalo to fix their goof, uh, which I don't think they ever really did, but oh well. Um, the other thing, hold on. Okay, uh, other thing, what was I saying? Nels mentioned was I am a uh, rail buff. Uh, that's kind of putting it lightly. Uh, I'll, I'll touch on that in a second here. Uh, this picture here, I like, I love this picture. It's the only picture I wanted from when the steam engine came through two years ago. Uh, so I actually got there Sunday morning at seven or eight a.m. and I sat there so I had my spot so if anybody else came around me I had my shot set up so and I it doesn't look as good on the screen as it does on the computer but it's it's a nice picture a um, little about me uh, he said I was a professional land surveyor uh, I work for Foyt Albert uh, Associates out of Buffalo New York uh, my main focus is construction uh, laser scanning, which I don't know if anybody understands what that is, and we'll be getting into uh, small uh, UAV, UA, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles soon. Uh, the part about me being a train buff, and how I'm saying that's a little bit underrepresented, uh, my brother and I own a small manufacturing company, Costello Manufacturing, and our major product is JJL Models, which is model trains. Uh, and the other reason I am, it's a little bit of an understatement, is I actually own my own passenger car. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, it does not look this nice right now. This is from 1963, uh, but I am in the process of restoring it, and hopefully it will, within the next year, I'll have it brought to either Buffalo or to Rochester area. Uh, for the final restoration. Okay, now about the bridge. Uh, main reason I, I brought this up, this is from the valuation maps of the area. Get the thing here. Um, right in here is where the bridge is. Uh, this over here is on the east side of the bridge and there is, I'll have a blow up of it in a second, but there was actually a little bit of a semi-major community for the, for the time over on that side. Uh, the other thing I always like to point out is this. Um, if you see along the, uh, you know, these, these lines would actually be the property uh, that was owned by the railroad. Uh, currently the tracks go off at a pretty sharp curve in that direction. Back when the bridge was originally built in 1851, it went straight off. 
and then you know out a few miles out it brought came back into where the tracks are now uh, and what I found out was it went from a one simple curve a little ways out into these big S curves uh, because of uh, sinkholes along the original route. Uh, here's that blow up of the east side. Um, and this, this doesn't really show a lot, but you've got the station, you've got the tower that controlled the, uh, all the switches at the bridge since it was just a single track bridge, but they had double track coming in. And like I said, there was a semi-major community up here. There was actually five tracks up there at one point, which if you've ever been up on that side, it doesn't really look like there's room. Um, here's the other one that shows a lot more of what was up there. Um, shoot, I can't see. Okay. Um, right in here is that station. You've got the crossing that's currently there still. Uh, you've got your tower. Uh, this is the Cascade House, which I will touch on a little bit. That's, there was actually two hotels up there. There was the Cascade House and there was the Portage House. Uh, and just like, you know, you, you've always heard the saying, I'm, I'm from the wrong side of the tracks or I'm, you know, Cascade House is where you went if you had money. Portage House is where you went if you didn't have money. <laughs> so it was, I, I still have yet to find pictures of the place. This was a really nice looking building and I'm sure, yeah, it costs a lot of money to stay there. On Portage, the Portage side, I've heard that's a little rougher. It's, you know, but I'm still working on getting that, that one. And then there was an actual, a dance hall up at the top there. Um, and if I, I've told if you go up there into that area, you'll actually find a lot of the old bottles, you know, uh, uh, broken down in there. Um, I, as many times as I've been up there, I've never walked down there though. I'll, I'll have to do that at some point. What year would it have been there? Uh, the Portage, sorry, Cascade House. Uh, it was, it was there probably right around 18, in the 1850s when the original bridge was built. Um, and I'll, I'll get to when it left, but it was probably, you know, it's, it was finally, finally gone in the late 60s, I believe. So. Chris, yes. 18 or 19? Eight. <laughs> Why was it located there? If they went south a little more, it would have been a lot flatter. Um, Did Letchworth own the land at the time? No. At the time, they did not own the land, or sorry, Letchworth did not own the land at the time. Um, actually, let me go back here a little bit. If you were, you can't read them up on the screen. This original, uh, I can't remember the names that it was bought from, uh, but they bought the property. This realignment was actually, was bought from Letchworth, and that would have, that would have happened in, 1870, early 1870s. So, uh, and what was your other question? I'm sorry. The location was. Oh, the location of where it was. Uh, what's always inter what's always fascinated me is back in the 1850s, and even before then, uh, land surveyors had basi basically had control of design of where things went. And, you know, I, I unfortunately, you know, I, this, it's hard to say at times, but a lot of the times surveyors are looked at as kind of the dumb guy out there that, you know, that doesn't really know what he's doing, but he, you know, he just goes out and tells us where to put things. Um, back in the 1850s, the surveyors said, this is where it should go. When the new bridge was, start, was designed, Engineers spent millions of dollars on their studies of what's the best alignment, what would cost the least, what would, you know, work. And they decided the best place for it was about 75 feet south of the original bridge. So I have a lot of, uh, of uh, faith in surveyors of that time because they just went out there and they basically walked around and said this is what's going to work. Uh, and a lot of that, you know, if you go south of there, um, where they start, where they end up, I think there'd be incredible grades to get there. 
uh, if you go north of there, the bridge would get too long, too long. Uh, so it's, and part of what Erie, Erie was huge on building bridges. They, you know, there's this bridge, there's Moodna, there's Starucka, there's Kinzu. They, they liked going across the top of mountains. <laughs> so they, and they spent tons of money doing it. Yes? Uh, the question is, uh, did the community on the east side of the bridge have a name, and it was Portageville. So. Okay, let's get back up here. Okay, this is where I stopped. The next one. Okay, uh, a lot of these pictures are from the uh, letchworthparkhistory.com. Some, it's something like that. I'm sorry, I'm not doing it justice. But... Um, First part of my program focuses on the original bridge and then the current bridge and then we'll get into the construction. Uh, this obviously is the original bridge, it's wood, uh, built in 1851. Uh, this is actually taken from the south side, you know, south side of the bridge, uh, up, you know, upstream basically. And then you've got the downstream side. This is where you could look, can look at the current bridge. Uh, there's the uh, overlook right there, uh, right by the, uh, the upper falls. Um, of course, the original bridge was wood. I, I like this picture because it shows just how big the, the timbers were on the bridge. You know, it, you're looking at you know, people standing right next to them. They're probably at least 12 inch by 12 inch timbers. Uh, the other interesting thing about the timber, the, how this bridge was constructed, any piece of that bridge could be pulled out, a train could come across it, it'd still hold. So, you know, so that's, that's something that amazes me because now they build so lean that it, you, know, you, pull a, uh, you pull a piece of, of steel out, most likely the bridge is just gonna fall down. Uh, this is on top of the bridge. Uh, and it offers us the first view of uh, Portageville up there. Uh, can see the Cascade House. This might be Portage House, but I'm not sure. Uh, you can see the station and the tower in there. Uh, but what really fascinates me is if anybody's been on that bridge, they know how windy it gets. They've looked down. They've, you know, and looking at where this picture is centered, he was standing on the railing or he had a ladder up there or something. Um, and I, although I'm not too bad with heights, I would never do that. <laughs> so just another view of the top. This is at the east, east end. You can definitely see Cascade House there, the station. And actually, I misspoke, I'm sorry. The original, what I called the tower before was actually a water tower. Uh, the other neat thing about this is that distance between the rails looks wide. And if anybody knows why that is, uh, Erie was original. Another great idea of theirs, uh, instead of doing the standard four foot, eight and a half inches between rails, they went six foot. This is actually worked when they're in, in their advantage and their disadvantage. Uh, advantages are Erie had some of the biggest clearances on the East Coast. So they, they were well known for hauling big stuff. Uh, the disadvantage was eventually they had to take every rail, move it. Uh, which is actually kind of neat because they did that in one night. So they, uh, they, they ended up buying some new engines some new locomotives, uh, some new cars. They put those in service the following day, but in one night they had enough crews set up so that they picked up the rail, brought it in. And then eventually all their old engines were converted. So. Is, is that why there's that gap on the right? So they could move that rail? Uh, the it's gap on the right. It's just a shadow. Oops. You mean right in there? Yeah. No, that's just, I think that's just how the picture was taken. Uh, because uh, this, 
I, I'm not sure when the picture was taken, but and I can't. I think it was 18 in the 1880s, I believe, when the what was originally moved, or when that rail was moved. Uh, it was moved long after the wood bridge was gone. So. Yes. So part of the draw for the hotel was to be able to go out on the bridge. They obviously uh, made it so it's wide enough to be like a boardwalk. Um, today, there wouldn't be, right? I mean, the railroads have a fit when you go anywhere near them. But back then, they encouraged it. Uh, kind of to a point, yes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, What's the question? The, the question was part of the draw for the hotels was being able to go out onto the bridge uh, and they, they, uh, they encouraged it. Uh, whereas today, they discourage you even going anywhere near the tracks. Uh, I would say to a point, yes. Uh, but I think the main draw of Portage was that uh, it's where the Erie came in to what is now Letchworth State Park. Uh, um, I don't know if I have a picture of it, but there was actually uh, stairway, oh, there, they had the stairways through the bridge, but you could go down to the falls. So it was, it was, kind, of, it was kind of that stop on the Erie uh, where you could go and see the, see the falls, see the lower areas that are now the park. Um, and at the time, I don't want to say it was encouraged to go on the bridge, but I don't think anybody cared at all. Okay. So, um, as I was saying, talking to somebody earlier, uh, you know, even guys my age, when they were young, they talked about how they'd go to Letchworth, they'd walk out on the bridge, and a train would come, and they would just stand there while the trains went by, and nobody cared. Now, it's much different. So, and quite honestly, having been out on the bridge, uh, I, I've, I don't know if I'd want to be on the bridge with a train. <laughs> so, like, uh, it was you saying that was very narrow. It's, you know, between the railing and the rail, you know, I could, I can definitely, I could lay down, and I'm not very tall, uh, and touch the railing and the rail at the same time, and trains overhang that rail. So, okay, uh, next port, uh, just a picture of the state, better picture of the station up there. And the tower that I keep talking about is right there. Um, I've got a couple things that indicate uh, that there was actually a gauntlet track on the bridge. It was definitely wide enough. Uh, what a gauntlet track is, is instead of having a full switch so that you're onto the very same tracks, there wasn't all those moving parts. It was just the tracks. Uh, people can see me, if you had the two rails going next to each other, the two inner ones would just cross so that you had four rails up there but in two separate tracks, but you didn't have those all the moving parts of a switch. Um, I haven't found actual good pictures that show me that, and so I take that for what it's worth. But there was you can see there's a semaphore right up there, one of the signals. It's actually telling the train to stop right now. Uh, so there was, a, there was a tower there to control that movement. So you, know, you couldn't have two trains on, set by, side by side on the bridge. So one had to stop if one was coming. Uh, just another picture of the station. And you can sort of see over the roof, you can see the Cascade House over there. I actually just noticed that last night when I was messing with it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, excuse me. If we could, uh, because we're recording this, Chris. Yes. Uh, so I've got a yeah. great uh, microphone here. Thank you, great microphone so, right here. Yeah, that helps out. <laughs> can you hear me anything I can say? Yes, yep. I can hear you. Okay. So what I was wondering about was the uh, telegraph lines and yes. any water lines or anything. But did the bridge carry those? Um, there are pictures that show telegraph lines. Uh, and there's actually some pictures that show uh, uh, control rods that cross the bridge for the towers that would control switches and signals. Water lines, I've never seen. Um, currently, I can't think of anything that crosses it other than 
there is a there is remnants of a uh, I'm going to call it kind of a seismic system uh, seismic uh, network to test how much the bridge moves, uh, which actually I found out was a complete failure and they pulled everything out. But that's also beside the point. But I don't know of any. That's that's all. Those are the only lines I know of crossing. There was a water line on the wooden bridge. Yes. With periodic faucets. Yes. Which I will talk about in a few minutes. <laughs> so, um, okay. As I was saying, you got the portage house up there, and there's not sorry, not portage house, cascade house. Um, <clears throat> As you can see, it looks like a very nice building. It, you know, for the time this was, this was probably in the 1850s, 1860s time that this picture was from, um, and it it looks like a nice place to be. It looks like you have money if you're there, as I was saying earlier. Still there? No. Um, this picture is from I probably I'm going to guess the early 1960s. Uh, it's one of the last pictures I've ever seen of it, and. Now, you know, probably, you know, it was late 60s, you know, same way things are now. Uh, you've got an old building, teenagers get in there, cause trouble, they have their, their little parties, they do whatever, and somebody accidentally lights it on fire. So unfortunately it is gone. I used to have pictures of the foundations. I don't know where they went. So otherwise I would be showing those. Um, so that, that would be the end of Cascade House. Um, this picture, I'm not entirely sure where it's taken from. I'm guessing it's kind of at the top of, uh, of the road where you would come up from uh, the Glen Iris Inn, uh, <clears throat> looking over at the old bridge. This is before uh, Letchworth Park was Letchworth Park, and I'm pretty sure it's even before Letchworth was even there. Uh, you can see there's several buildings down there. There was a, a small community down there too. Um, this, it's looking, uh, south. Uh, this is located at the north, on the north side of the bridge. Okay. So the uh, up, sorry, Upper Falls, Lower Falls would be just to the left of the picture. Um, here's a slightly better picture. This would be taken over from what we know now as Trail 7. At the time, it was probably the canal. Uh, you've got the Middle Falls in the center. Um, you actually had a bridge across at the top of Middle Falls, and there were several little mills down in that area. Um, this would be Trail 7. Uh, at the time of the Wood Bridge, there was also the canal there, um, and Trail 7 would be built somewhere in that area now. Um, I love this picture. Um, you know, if you go along Trail 7 and you look to your, if you're headed south and you look to your right, you're looking down. Uh, <clears throat> But this, I love this picture because it shows just how crazy the, uh, the canal was, how, how, how crazily it was built uh, right on the side of a mountain. Just another picture kind of showing the you know, other side of that picture. But this, this one actually leads into the next picture. But you know, you've got your canal, you've got your towpath. And as I'm assuming most of us know, and it's tough to see, but that canal eventually became a rail line. It's filled in, became the Pennsylvania Railroad. Picture looking directly down from the bridge. This would have been the steel bridge at this time. Onto the railroad. Um, this is a little bit off topic, but I, I love, I like this because it. If you've been to what is now Portageville, you can look off and you can see some, some remnants of this bridge. Uh, this would have been the aqueduct for 
the canal. Uh, it didn't when it crossed the when it crossed the river. It didn't go into the river. It crossed a bridge that had water in it. Um, and I believe that the original canal bridge was just modified to do the railroad bridge. Uh, the original name of the canal was, thank you, Irene. <laughs> I was going to say it, but Irene is definitely, uh, uh, I should probably repeat it, the Genesee Valley Canal. Um, it's, uh, Irene's involved with the Friends of the Greenway. Okay, I, I, I did it right. The, uh, no, this, right now in this picture, this is showing the canal. Oh, it's an aqueduct. Okay. Yep, it's an aqueduct. But when they converted the canal into the railroad, the bridge, same bridge cross, or sorry, the railroad bridge crossed in the same spot. And I believe that the original aqueduct was just converted into the railroad bridge. I have never seen a picture of the railroad bridge. So the left were very high. Yes. This bridge is much lower. Yes. They cross at different places. Huh? Different places. The so, Chris, could you repeat the question? Yes. Thank okay. You. The question was about the. This bridge was very low. Letchworth was very high. Uh, let me go back a couple slides. Maybe a couple more. There we go. Um, the Letchworth Bridge currently is at that elevation of the top of that bridge. This is where the rail line would have crossed, uh, the rail line that would have crossed that aqueduct would be. So you're looking, I wanna say it's 150-ish feet from the rail down to that elevation. Um, <clears throat> but that's where they crossed. About a mile behind this picture is where that aqueduct would be. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry to you again, but what year are we talking about? Um, uh, for this picture, for example. For this picture, it would this, the year that this picture would be taken would have been somewhere between 1851 and 1875. That is the best I can say about that. But they'll never tell us about that's the year of the canal. Uh, the canal was built before the railroad was. I'm sorry, what? 1820. 1820 was when the canal was built. 1840s. Okay, either the 1820s or the 1840s. <laughs> it was when the canal was built. The bridge was built in 1851. The, and I'll, I'll get to the rest of the history of the bridge, but this bridge would have gone 1875, sorry. Uh, but the canal was still there under the steel bridge, or wrought iron bridge. Uh, I saw another. Yeah, I, I have a question. I remember years ago learning something about how we, we couldn't have skyscrapers until we had steel. Yes. So these thing, this is much taller than a skyscraper. I mean, than, mm -hmm. than, than the buildings that we had before skyscrapers. Yes. How did they do this without steel? How did they do this with wood? Hold on just a second. Um, remember my picture? There. Um, there, this, this, this bridge actually would have been very tough to walk through. You can see this walkway here. You've actually got timbers coming down through your walkways. I mean, you've got crosses. It's, everything's crossing in there. Whereas with the steel, you know, and, you know so the, the, the wood had to be a much more dense network of stuff, of members holding it. Whereas the steel, you can, you know, you can place something, well, now you can place things 50, 60 feet away, and you can haul, you can carry whatever on that steel. The wood, you could, you know, if you're going 20 feet, you're really, really pushing, carrying anything. Um, so when, you know, and, and then the other part of that too is, and I don't really have any pictures that show it well, um, this bridge, it came out about like that in spots. So you've got a skyscraper that's going up like this with steel, whereas you've got a wood bridge coming out, well, maybe more like that. So there, it took up a lot more footprint by the time it got to the top. So does that answer or 
I can keep going. <laughs> oh no, not a problem. It's yeah, it, it's yeah, it's definitely tough to uh, visualize if it's not something that you're you deal with all the time. But it's but yeah, it's the wood was just you know you've it, it just won't hold together as well and how how the strengths the strengths of the materials that are involved. So okay, uh, let me get back to my. Okay. Did I cover the aqueduct pretty well? Okay. <laughs> um, what we've been alluding to this whole time with the original bridge uh, is it burned down. Uh, story is that train crossed and there was a, a bridge tender, I guess, that would walk the bridge, make sure nothing, no cinders or anything came off the locomotive, set, the, set it on fire. Uh, what Irene was mentioning earlier was there was a water line across this whole bridge and that was mainly for fighting fires. Uh, so this guy crossed the bridge, nothing. Went back to his shack, about an hour later, he looks out the window and there's a fire. So he, you know, and I believe he was probably on the east side of the bridge Ever, all the you know, so he started running across trying to turn these faucets on, and they were all rusted shut. So, um, so May sixth, it it that was the end of the original bridge. What year was it first? Uh, 1875, <laughs> May sixth, 1875. And during the Civil War, was it uh, guarded? I don't know. That's that's interesting. I'll I'll have to look that one up. The question was during the Civil War was the bridge guarded? Heavily. All right, heavily. <laughs> so I might have to talk to you. Um, <clears throat> so May sixth, eighteen seventy five, it burned down. Um, just some pictures of what's left. Uh, you can see in the in the river. There's a lot of debris. Only thing that survived was the the stone stone piers. Uh, okay. There's always I always get asked this question when I do this presentation. Did the bridge get burned down purposely? Um, I love the Erie Railroad, so I will never talk bad about them. All I will tell you is what I have heard and found out. Um, much like the current bridge, the, there was a bit of a public outcry when Erie Railroad said, we're going to replace the bridge. They did not want the bridge gone. They loved their bridge. And I don't know if, if they eventually kind of said, okay, fine, whatever. Um, and then the bridge burned down somewhat conveniently. Uh, this is from the design of the design drawings of the current bridge. Um, I'm not surprised at this date because Erie was interested in replacing the bridge, but and nobody can see it. I can't even see it. But somewhere in here, there's a date of 1874. So the bridge was designed and ready to go uh, when the fire happened about a year later. I can stay on that slide for a little bit. Yes? Were the footings still in place when they did the next bridge for where the, you know, the, 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 the bottom? The okay, bridge. you're talking, are the, are the <clears throat> excuse me, the footings still in place when they did the steel bridge? The, right. The second steel bridge, yes. The, the yes, the original footings for the wood bridge are still in use today. Most of them, most of them. Yes? Before you get to the new bridge, mm -hmm. the old bridge had some history or records. Yes. Can you talk about how many logs it took and was it the tallest and biggest wood bridge? Okay. Uh, the original bridge, the question, the question was about the how much wood was involved and um, 
I know I've read the numbers. I don't remember the numbers. I want to say it was like 100 acres of timber was used for the wood, wood bridge. What's that? 300. 300. See, Irene, Irene's better with the wood bridge. I'm, I'm not so good with the wood bridge. <laughs> so uh, what was the rest of them? Was it the tallest in, uh, wood bridge in the world? Okay, question was, was it the tallest wood bridge in the world? And I can't remember. Irene, can you? Irene's shaking her head no. So I'm, it, you, know, you, that you don't know, okay. I think it might have been. I, I've, I think I heard that. I want to say I heard it too, but I, I can't say for sure. So, so, uh, yes. What is the height of this bridge? Uh, the height of the current bridge, from the railhead to the average height, average level of the water is. I want to say it was like 250 feet. So. Okay. Uh, Question. Yes. Okay. The first bridge was where the canal was. That was lower. Was that the site of the original bridge with all of the timbers that burned down? Okay. Uh, question is about, she's confused about the original, br the two bridges. Um, I actually had two separate sites. The, the, the low bridge that I discussed, that was the aqueduct. It would be over in Portageville, like uh, uh, coming south out of, Coming south, come, before you even hit the park, um, the river comes in and bends, and that's where that aqueduct would have been. Um, that was for the Pennsylvania Railroad that went under the, it never went under the wood bridge. The canal went under the wood bridge, but then the canal eventually became the Pennsylvania Railroad, and that, eventually, that would have gone under the current bridge. So under the, you remember the picture that showed the big wood bridge? Yeah, but I thought it was farther down the river. The, because when you looked at those uh, pictures, they were the other bridge farther down the river and then this big tall bridge, which we all know. Right. Was Are you talking? A, a different site. Oops. You're talking about this bridge, right? Yeah. Okay. The lower bridge. Yes, this low bridge. Um, Pennsylvania Railroad, not the Erie. Right. This bridge would have carried the canal and the Pennsylvania Railroad, which is where the wood bridge, where the steel, the wrought iron bridge, where the new bridge is going, is, you know, that's downstream about a mile, um, and they're separated by about 150 feet vertically. So they're that um, original bridge that you're talking about that burned down, this is about a mile Correct. downstream. Yes, this bridge is about a mile away from the original, or from, sorry, the wood bridge that burned down. Okay, so is that low bridge, is there still something there? This bridge, where the Pennsylvania, where the Pennsylvania crossed the Genesee River, there is uh, uh, the pier, not the piers, the, uh, the foot, there, there's footings in the river. I believe, and then there's the uh, uh, the the ends of the bridge. There's there's some stone structure at either end of the bridge, I believe. Okay, but it's basically, so, it's gone. It's basically gone. Yes. Yeah. I I just like showing it because it's it's neat to me. <laughs> so so, all right. Are we how are we doing on time? I can speed up if need be. Yeah, they okay. keep Ten, oh, I got plenty of time then. Okay. Uh, let's get back to there. So, so there was, the new bridge was a year, designed a year before it was built. Yes, the new bridge, the bridge that was built in 1875 was built, or sorry, designed a year before the bridge burned down. And why did they design it before? Uh, they designed it, be, oh, I know what you're trying to get me to say. <laughs> um, my reasoning for why the bridge was originally, was designed a year before um, is that they needed time to design it. They needed time to mill the steel. They needed time to get the steel to the site, which I'll touch on here in a second. 
Um, like I did say, there was a little bit of a public outcry. They didn't want their beautiful wood bridge gone. Um, but by the time it was 14 years old, that wood was deteriorating. There's a constant, constant moisture from the falls. Um, so it was probably really about at the end of its life. Uh, and then this fire happened on May 6th. So let me just give a few dates here and I will not say another word about it after that because like I said, I love my Erie Railroad and I won't talk bad about them. May 6th, 1875, bridge burned down. June 8th, 32, 33 days later, construction started on the new bridge. <laughs> July 31st, was that 53 days later, the bridge opened. Wow. So. Can you, can you say how much traffic there was in those 50, would it have been in those 53 days? Regardless of the type of bridge, did it really benefit them financially to burn down a bridge and then, and then construct a new bridge? Um, I don't think it hurt them. Uh, the question was, did it, how much traffic would have been in those, actually would have been 86 days from the day it burned to the day it opened. Um, to, would it have benefited them to burn it down and build a new bridge? I don't think, I, what I'll say is I don't think it hurt them because they were immediately able to route traffic around. At the time, I believe they had the line open through Salamanca, north through Cattaraugus, through, oh, everything, Gowanda, up into Buffalo. So they were able to reroute. And then there was also the Lackawanna. They may have done some rerouting on that. Um, but looking at the plan that they had a year prior, that bridge was going to have to go away while they built it, either way, because they were originally going to, always originally going to use the same footings. I know Erie was good at rebuilding their bridges. Uh, if anybody's heard of Kinzu Bridge in McKean County, PA, uh, they had originally built that bridge, and this, that bridge was, this bridge is nothing compared to what Kinzu was. Uh, Kinzu, I don't remember the date, the date, the, uh, the uh, time frames exactly, but that bridge, it was wrought iron, it was very, it looked very spindly, um, 300 feet high in the center, they, about a half mile long. Uh, that bridge, they planned it, they got everything on site, they built from both sides, or sorry, rebuilt from both sides, what they did, they had uh, these kind of traveling cranes that would span, you know, you had a tower here, you had a tower here, you had a tower here. That crane would sit here. They'd tear down this one, and they'd rebuild it. They'd move over. They'd tear down, and they'd rebuild. That took about 90 days. 90. But that was from time of construction to time of completion. So that, so, but, and, and they had time to get everything on site. Uh, so, and this took 86 days from time of demolition to get everything on site, to build it, to open it, and they weren't working from an existing platform. They had to build in from the sides. So, okay. <laughs> um, building the current bridge. Um, like I'm saying, I was showing, saying here, you know, they built in from each end. And you can see that in, in this, these pictures. You got a tower built here, you got a tower built over there. There's at least two more towers in between there that had to be built. Uh, pictures from the top of it being built. This is a similar view from where we were at uh, on the wood bridge. You know, you can see your Cascade House, your station, your water tower, everything there. And that's the test train. So I think it was 10 locomotives they ran across at once. Um, and as, as I was saying, you can see right along there is the canal. 
which Canal, Pennsylvania Railroad, Trail 7. And you can also see the original piers from the wood bridge. Um, that pier has now been removed. There's probably another pier right there that's been removed. Just another picture, short, you know, shortly after it's been rebuilt, there's actually, it's kind of tough to really make out, but a lot of this right here is debris from the fire. And then just another train on the original bridge. Uh, it's also worth pointing out, take a look at how things are constructed. You've got your, your trusses in there, everything, it seems very light. Um, you might have picked up, I'm, I have a little bit of trouble with original bridge, new bridge, um, and I'll explain that in a minute. Yes, ma'am. The uh, question was the total loss of life on both of the bridges. I don't know. Um, being involved in a lot of construction projects, you don't want to know that. Um, you know, I've I've seen accidents. I've I have not. I've luckily not been involved in a major accident, but it's not something you want to know. You don't. It's it, it's it, it. Yeah, it, it's. I'm sure the it's out there. I've never seen it, and I don't, I would never go looking for it. So, um, just another picture. This is from the east side, pretty close to where my original picture was taken. Um, once again, take a look at the, the trusses, even, even the uh, columns and the, uh, the footers. Now, that'll all, that'll all get explained in just a little bit. Just some more pictures taken from upstream. You can really see the canal at this point. Okay, the reason I wanted you to take a look at things. These plans are from 1906, 30 years after the bridge was built. Um, everybody calls it the second bridge or the original steel bridge. The bridge that's out there is actually a third bridge. Um, in 1906, all of these were replaced. They were strengthened. Um, they're, they're tough to see on on the screen. There's the original. There's they show the original trusses, and then they've got the current heavier duty trusses. And that happened in 1906. Um, I can't, I believe at the time, the in between the towers were redone a little bit too. Uh, in 1946, you know, actually there's, see there's your difference in those top pieces. Uh, I believe it was 1946, at, at the very least it was mid to late 40s. They actually rebuilt all of the towers. So um, that's why I call it, I kind of call it the third bridge. So, uh, and it was, the, the third bridge was built while trains were still going across. Uh, I've got pictures of it that I can't legally show uh, that they basically jacked things up, pulled a piece of steel out, put a new piece of steel in to, to carry heavier weights. Have you researched the uh of the rail cars over this time frame. You're talking about a wood bridge, then a first bridge, then a reinforced bridge, and the final yep. reinforced bridge. Isn't that more likely why they are building these as opposed to they didn't do it right the first time? The um, question was about the capacities of the rail cars and was it more, is it more likely that they uh, Rebuild, are rebuilding the bridges to, for increased capacities instead of because they didn't do it right. The only, and yes, you're, you are absolutely right, the ants, but I need to follow that up. The only thing I ever said they didn't do right was they went to Dunkirk yeah. and not Buffalo. So the, you know, that, that's, that, the, you know, that's why the bridge is currently being replaced because of capacities, well, age and capacity. Uh, 
you know, they, I, I couldn't give you numbers off the top of my head right now as far as the uh, older cars, you know, but you're looking at, you know, something that was, you know, when the Woodbridge Wood, Wood was built, a car was probably 20 tons. I'm just kind of throwing that out there as a guess. Today, 40 tons, I got a 40 ton sitting in that lot. Yes. I mean, that's typical for a flatbed right now. Yes, for a flatbed. Uh, these, oh, those are passenger cars, sorry. Um, a coal car from this era right here, probably maybe a little after that, no, that era, would be 40, 50 tons. A coal car today hauls over 100 tons. So that just kind of, um, and then before somebody asks me the question, uh, currently the bridge has speed restrictions on it of 10 miles an hour. And that's because of so much more weight, they can't, you know, the vibrations from it, it's just, it will literally, literally shake the bridge apart. So. Well, how, how much of the old structure when we build this new one is, can you say, how much will be intact? Will, uh, Okay, question was how much of the old structure will be intact when the new bridge is finished? Um, none. Correct, the bottom will be gone. The, uh, I've got a couple drawings that I can show that will show. Sorry, Joe. No, you're fine, you're fine. Uh, we'll get to that then. Okay. So, um, but this, this, okay, this picture showed those, those trusses up there. I, I don't think at the time Actually, I can say almost certainly that the towers had not been rebuilt yet. So there's, so there's yes. no way anybody could get up to that railroad? No, there is no way, well, not legally. There's no way, no legal way for you to get up there yeah. at this time. <laughs> uh, uh, this picture, I really only put, I put it in to kind of show the change. Uh, we're looking at the, from the east side to the west side. Uh, this was right around the time Letchworth State Park was getting formed. So the roadway that was under it is not there. There, it looks like there's a trail that goes up in there. That is all there was. Um, and at this point, I believe the towers had been rebuilt. The new bridge. Um, this is from the drawing. It's definitely uh, shrunk, not shrunk, distorted. Uh, but you're about 70, you're, it'll be about 75 feet south of the current bridge. Not, the, not in the same location, no. Because uh, they, they now, unlike back in, the 18, in 1875, there's no route around. Uh, Norfolk Southern, technically they own the old Erie Main Line through Salamanca, but they can't get to Buffalo from there. Um, and speeds are just, you can't, they're, 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 the speeds, I think it's like 30, 40 miles an hour for the whole route. Whereas here they can go, I wanna say 45, 50 up to the bridge, then they gotta go 10 and then they can go 45, 50 again. Does that mean where the original is, all those tracks come out too on each end? Yes, to a point, and to I can, a point. to a point, yes. The, the tracks of, the original bridge will come out, the approaches to the original, I shouldn't say the original bridge, I should say well, current bridge, sure. yes. Uh, tracks up to that point will come out, but there will be some realignment probably, I'll say about a quarter mile back from each, from each end of the bridge. And that's where it'll connect into the existing track. So, um, okay, as, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, as many of us know now, it is gonna be a new arch, which, it'll be pretty. Um, over here would be where the existing park road, actually it would be right about there existing park road is, um, and there will be approaches to that steel arch construction. Uh, your nice computer rendering of it. Um, I mean, as much as I do love the old bridge, it is 
it will be more appealing to to the general public. More open. More open. It, you know, as as we were saying earlier, all the piers will be removed. Nothing will be left there. It will be, you know, the river will be clear to flow. Not not that it necessarily inhibits it at this point, but so yes. Width of that stand. The width of the arch is, I want to say, 550 feet. Just a second. I can't read it down there either. Um, the overall width of the bridge, I think, was about 800. Well, the current bridge is 819 feet, and 1800, eight, 819 feet, and some change. Uh, that is probably pretty close. It does go a little bit bigger than the current bridge with the approaches. Um, so your footings are on each side? Yes, you will have, you'll have a uh, pier, oh, not a pier, but you'll have a footer there. You'll have a footer there. You'll have dirt approach up to all of it. You have a pier. You'll have a pier, you have another pier, you'll have another pier, and then this, I've got some pretty neat pictures of that, but that's uh, it's just concrete skew back, so there's actually, it's actually angled, and there's, it's pin, there's a pin that, you know, go, the steel will come up from and the steel will go out from. So, um, Okay, here is what I was talking about, the drawings. Uh, let me just make sure I'm where I think, where I, think I am. Okay. Uh, this is the park side of the bridge. You would have, you know, up till a year and a half ago, there's the little parking lot that was there. You've got your road that went, sorry, your road that went through and down. And then the existing bridge is actually right there. Um, so, like I said, the new bridge is 75 feet south. Uh, the road, instead of going down right along the edge of the gorge and then down that big hill, will actually come under the new bridge through the dirt approach of the current bridge and then go down that hill. And then there will be a kind of a parking area over, you know, for you to view from there. Uh, this is the overall view. You can see that's that new road, the old bridge, new bridge, and on this east side, there's it's really you know the only only changes over there are going to be pulling out the current dirt, putting in the new dirt, uh, and then just whatever drainage controls. Okay, a uh, while ago I had the question, how are they building this arch? And this is the only real picture I, can, I was able to show at the time. If you see, there's, they had the, like I was talking about, those skews, those skew backs. They're going to build off of that. So they'll build this structure and they'll do a temporary support into the ground to hold it from tipping. And then they're just going to keep adding to that structure from both sides until they meet in the middle. So I would say by the summertime you go out there, you're going to see the steel structure just kind of hanging out there. And you're going to say, how are they even holding that thing? And there's, there's going to be huge cables that are dug right into the ground that aren't going to let that come in, hopefully. So they are using cables? I would imagine it's cables. I, I, it's been a while since I've been out there. Uh, definitely I have not been out there since they put the steel up. Um, I do have some pictures of it, but they're from the internet. Into rock? Uh, yes, those, those are, those, they're, they'd have uh, uh, ties that would go into most, Whatever rock is in there, it's not real good rock down there, but there, there, there's some, some sort of uh, hol uh, holder or anchor that goes right into, into the bedrock if, if they can hit there. So. What is the timetable? 
Uh, timetable for this construction was, it was supposed to be open this spring. Um, but because of delays and everything, I've heard the bridge should be open either late this summer or fall. Um, we'll see. I, I, I really can't say, give you a, an actual date on that at this point. If so. it's down there while the construction, can you get a tour or can you get some? Absolutely not. The question was, can you go into, if you go down there during construction, can you get a tour? I would suggest nobody even try it. <laughs> um, I know the guys there, they aren't too bad to deal with, but in working with... make it happen. What's that? You can make that happen. So we I can cannot make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot make it happen. Um, you can't go near construction. Yes, it's a, it's a closed construction site. Um, <clears throat> and because of the nature of it with the, you know, the bridge, heavy construction, railroad, it's quite honestly, you don't, you, you want, if you were working on the site, you might not even want to be on the site. So, yes? point in the construction are they at this date? Uh, um, I will get to that. Question, uh, question is what point are they in the construction? The most recent pictures I've seen uh, on the east side, they have the approach spans up and they have a piece, a piece of steel going up and a piece of steel going out. On the west, sorry, yes, the west side, they were just putting up the approach spans. So, and I've got some pictures of that. So, okay. As I said, I got to work on the bridge. Um, uh, if you don't know much about, you, I'm sure not too many people here, I would imagine, know much about land surveying, but part of what we need to do is we need to be able to see. So I got to sit and watch trains for about a half hour to 45 minutes every morning. Waiting for the fog to lift. It's, yeah. this is, you know, probably 45 minutes in, I'm getting about ready to do it. Um, I feel at this point I should ask the question, what is a surveyor? Because a lot of people don't know. Uh, I, you know, I've been a surveyor now for 15 years or so, maybe longer. Um, and people ask me, what do you do? I say, well, I'm a, I'm a surveyor. I go, oh, you take surveys at the mall? No. <laughs> I do not survey at the mall. I don't take, um, I said, no, I, I locate property boundaries. I lay out for construction. I, and at that point, you get a blank look. So eventually I say, you know that guy, when you're driving down the road and you go through the construction site and you see that guy taking pictures? It's not a camera, but they know exactly who I am. So, this, the instrument here, it, it gives me horizontal angles, gives me vertical angles, and it gives me distances. And from there, I can locate anything, I can lay out anything, you know, once I have a control network set up for, you know, for reference points. Um, I kind of like the picture because it kind of, Represents. That's how George Washington Yes, taking pictures. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I can't. I'm not going to be able to use this picture much longer because a lot of our total stations are starting to use cameras uh, for more advanced stuff. Uh, we can actually take a picture. If we miss something, we can actually measure off pictures. Now, so. That that would yeah yes. There's multiple different, I won't get too crazy, but there's theodolite, then there's total station. The total station does a little bit more than a theodolite. So, but that's, the total station will do everything a theodolite will do. A theodolite will not do everything a total station will do. So, you had another question? Oh, you did. <laughs> I thought it was a little good thing. One of the first uh, frames you showed us, you said that they had to divert the railroad into a curve when they made it because yes. there was a sinkhole there. Yes. So land surveyors can know if there's sinkholes. Uh, not, no, no, that's, that's more geology. Oh. Um, 
you know, a sink, you know, if, if I walk across where a sinkhole is forming, I won't know. Um, which is why they originally did the, they had a, it went, came straight off the bridge and it curved and then basically went straight north uh, where the track currently is now. Uh, they, I believe in those years they had issues with sinkholes, with drainage, and they had to, you know, rebuild, 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 and eventually they said, forget this, we're going to do this other little thing. And it took me a little while to get the answer on that because it was, uh, it was, uh, nobody, well, first of all, it happened over 100 years ago, and second of all, you know, everybody said, oh, well, it's, it has to do with grades, it has to do with this, and eventually I, I kind of poo-pooed all those ideas uh, for various reasons, and then I said, okay, I'll, I'll go with the sinkholes. <laughs> so, yes. So more, oh, sorry. So it's more geology that would help. That would be a geology thing, yes, yes. Is the Genesee Gorge had an effect of where the, bri where the bridge and the, and the train went through? Uh, question is, did the gorge have a... Uh, help decide where the bridge would be, yes. Yes, 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 absolutely. That was, it was one of the narrow, more, more narrow places of the gorge, and it's where the, ro the rail line kind of came up, uh, based, a lot of it based on grades from where they started, where they finished, and getting those low enough grades so the trains could actually make it up the hill, so. So you're saying they don't use transits anymore? Is that no, they no. They, well, transits, it's, you're, you're, we're starting to get into terminology of each individual piece of equipment. Uh, a total station takes the place of a transit, takes the place of a theodolite. So they don't, surveyors don't use transits anymore? No, we'll use a total station. So, and it's, it's just a matter of same concept equipment, just upgraded. It, it's like using a Model T compared to a uh, Ferrari. So, more, there you go, more fun. Okay, kind of an explanation of what we actually did out on the bridge. Uh, we set up this control network, or all these reference points out there, and <clears throat> using our total station. So what we had was right here, he's got a point set up. Uh, we actually have a point behind us for reference. We turned a horizontal angle so that we could get our uh, next point, and we have a vertical angle. Uh, the vertical angle wasn't used as much because we ended up doing some other stuff, which I don't touch on, but uh, he's actually shooting down across, through the bridge, across the gorge, down to the bottom. Down to the west side on the, so you're, he was actually standing up there before. We now have our reference point up there He's setting up here, so now we have our, our, we're now referenced which way we're turning, and he's going to turn over to the observation deck, uh, where you, where most people view the bridge now, and I don't think he's showing up, but he's right there. Excuse me. Yes. I mean, why? We're not. Oh, I thought that's what you're doing here. No, we are referencing, we're getting a reference network. This, ne this These points we used later on to build the new bridge. Um, and to actually, we did do a little, I shouldn't say we didn't survey the old bridge. We did do a little bit of that. Uh, that was basically when they started blasting rock. Before they blasted, we had to set up our equipment and we had to locate a bunch of points on the bridge. Um, and then they blasted, and after we had to locate all those same points again to make sure nothing moved. If something moved over a quarter of an inch, that's a quarter of an inch, I had to remember the spec, then the bridge couldn't be used. Um, just for reference, nothing ever moved more than anything I could even read. So it was, every, you know, I, you know, 
between my fingers. You guys can't see it because I can barely see it. That's how much we saw movement. Um, so, you know, continuing with this reference network, we actually came, went up to the top again. Um, and these, these, this point was originally going to be used to monitor those peers during that blasting. We ended up not using this peer, but it, or this point, but it is still down there. Um, is that the way they'll take the footers out of it to blast it? I don't know. Um, I have a feeling they won't because it is right next to the new bridge. Uh, I believe the, 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 the original design showed uh, causeways being built into the river for that purpose, but I don't know if they will, that's if I, know, I don't know if that's how they'll remove them or not. So it'll be interesting to see. We'll watch that next summer. So um, this again, that's at that point and you can't see him, but he's, he's down there someplace. All right, I mentioned our, our vertical angles. We didn't use those because we leveled. And all that is is we're getting vertical coordinates, I guess. Uh, and the first time I ever got to cross the bridge on foot was leveling across it. Up to this, you know, this was December of 2015. If you remember 2000, December 2015, it was beautiful until today. Um, it got cold, it got windy, it got wet. Um, my helper was cursing me the whole time. Um, he is not a fan of heights. Um, and I kept laughing at him. And uh, to be fair though, I was on the south side of the bridge. On the north side of the bridge, you look down and you see a waterfall. Um, so I was laughing at him the whole time saying, you're a wuss. I came back on, that, on the other side. And it took me a moment, but I saw why he was, he was upset. Why would he upset? It's further down, you've got a lot more. If you look on the south side of the bridge, yeah. you just see some water flowing. Pretty, you know, it looks gentle, it's, it's not, but it looks gentle. You look on the other side, you've got a waterfall. There, there's a lot more going on and it gets, it gets a little bit more uh, uh, interesting, I'll say. So. Um, this is not us, but um, I say I'm not afraid of heights. I will not do this. This is looking down and this guy, once a month, he comes out he repels down each tower. He checks all the connections, all the pins, all the bolts, all the rivets. And then he gets to the bottom, he unhooks, somebody drives down, gets them, brings them back up. He moves to the next one, goes down again. Takes them two days and they do it once a month. And that's on the existing bridge. Um, he Probably does. I've never asked. Um, so I, as, the only contact I had with him is as I walked by him, I would just shake my head. <laughs> by the way, he's doing this the same day that I first crossed the bridge. <laughs> um, how much do they pay that guy? <laughs> I don't know how much they pay him. <laughs> I know how much they pay me, and they couldn't get me to do it for that. <laughs> um, this was something that I mentioned earlier, the whole seismic network around the bridge. Um, that's something that got put on uh, to kind of monitor the bridge. They, uh, they had, there, there was a little bit of a, I don't want to call it a failure, but it was some, a couple of pin shifted and part of the structure did actually need to be put back into place. Um, but these were, these were put all over the bridge to kind of monitor that so that if something did shift, they could stop the trains. The system was a complete failure, but it, it's kind of neat to see it. That, did that uh, 
Did that slide out from under that plate there or something? Um, I can't remember exactly what happened. What it was, it was, uh, there, there was something about a pin came out and part of the structure, part of the truss started to sag somehow. Um, luckily, nothing crossed it. It was found, but, but it, it kind of lit a fire for them to monitor this bridge, uh, put any kind of Band-Aid on the bridge they have to put on it, and to build a new bridge. So, um, This is Trail 7. Um, I like showing this bridge, or sorry, showing this picture because you can, if you look down underneath the bridge, you can kind of see it all clear all the way down through. Uh, this would have been the bed of the Pennsylvania Railroad, and then the canal would be right in there. Uh, but the reason I really like showing, pointing that out is from the blasting and the excavation, this is Trail 7 under where the current bridge, or the new bridge will be. Um, so Trail 7 will be gone? Trail 7 will be back. <laughs> from what I'm told, it will be back. Right now it's not there though. It's yeah. right there. So. All right, some of the skew backs. Uh, you can kind of see, I've got better pictures. That's the east side skew back where they were blasting down. Here they were kind of getting, getting to the hard rock. They were digging out the dirt, digging out any loose rock. Um, got a better picture, maybe the, not this one. But what they would do is they would, you can see the bucket behind them. He would dump into the bucket. They'd lift the bucket up move it over to the side, and dump the bucket out. Did that nonstop. Here is what I was going to show you. Oops. Um, this is in that same skew back. Right in here, it doesn't look it, and you would never really know it, but on that edge, you know, you would think the wall goes down like this. It actually goes like this. So he's actually standing on about six inches to a foot of rock right there. Got to get all the loose bedrock out. Got to get all the loose stuff off. Yep. Yeah, about six inches to a foot below him is open air. Oh. This is the part a lot of people like. Um, I always get asked, oh, well, can we see the blast? Maybe. There we go. This is one of the original test blasts. Is this how far they are now? Or is no, this is last year. Oh, this is last year. This is a year ago, yeah. Um, these are actually just tires cut up and all kind of roped together. Did it go? No, it didn't, okay. Um, it's very exciting, very, you know, everybody's always excited about seeing explosives. And that was it. <laughs> Just enough to loosen it up. Just enough to loosen it up. Um, and that actually, uh, it's a little deceiving. That's, like I said, that was one of the test blasts. So I think they had about half the amount of explosives in there. Um, there was actually a smaller area than most of what they were doing. Um, and unfortunately, I never got to see it personally. But one of the guys that works out there was nice enough to post That is more what people yeah. think they're yeah. going to see. So, and once they really got into the test, once they got through the test blasting, making sure the bridge wasn't going to shift, making sure they started going a little bit more crazy with it. What they did is uh, each one of those, you see each one of these lines, they, were, they drilled down 15 feet, packed it with explosives, blew it up. Those then when they, you know, so they had their ledge, their ledge there. At the bottom here, they came out three feet, drilled, blasted. Came out three feet, drilled, blasted, all the way down. So. How suitable is the bedrock for this kind of structure? The bedrock is not so great. It's, uh, um, 
they have to go way in. Yeah, they're, uh, the, it, it's very loose rock. Even, you know, the bedrock, it's all kind of shale and just real loose. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, 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 reinforcing that went in. Okay. So, yeah, it, um, there's, I know, like, it's tough to see, I'm sorry, but in here and in here, there's all sorts of uh, that an those anchors that are going right down in to hold everything back. And then even uh, now they are cut down quite a ways and they, there's netting that goes up in there. Yeah, the, you know, all those anchors are uh, shot cre created in and everything. Um, this is taken from the existing bridge. You can see there, you can sort of see they're starting the, uh, they're actually, that guy right there would have been pulling out loose material and the guy next to him would be drilling for explosives. Um, some of the piers on the west side being put together. Um, and this is actually where my photos stop, but I've got a lot of internet pictures. So, uh, one of the labor foremen out, the labor foreman out there was t started taking a bunch of pictures and posting them. Uh, this is the form for that first pier that's going up. So you can see kind of the size of them. Um, and you, there's a couple interesting things going on here. You can see they're drilling, which was interesting. They would lower the drill rig down there. They would drill. They'd pull it out, pack everything with explosives, do their explosions, lower the backhoe down, get the dirt out, pull it up, put the drill rig back in. So it's kind of a long process. Uh, the other thing that you can kind of see is there's kind of a whitish colored line here. That's, uh, this whole face, rock face, was actually concrete. Uh, back, I wanna say it was the fi early 50s, they reinforced that whole, rock, whole, whole wall with concrete. Um, and what they had to do was they had to uh, cut a line where that skew back is going. So that's what that white line is and I was lucky enough to lay that out. Remember that walk, rock wall goes like this and down. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, just some aerial photos that kind of show you've got your skew back going in. You know, actually, that's still blasting, I think. That one's definitely going to need to be blasted. And you can see the original road and why that road was being relocated. Won't there be any effect when they take the old one down, they got the new one up? What about if they, they probably won't do any blasting on the old one, they just cut that up? Correct. I doubt it will be blasted. What I imagine they'll do, they'll probably start with some traveling crane. Um, oops. They will start, I wonder if it's the next, no, the next one doesn't show any better. Um, they'll probably lift the first pier out, or not the pier, the first girder out drag it across, cut it up. Then pull the second one out, drag it across, cut it up. Then they'll tear the tower down, cut it up. And they'll just keep doing that all the way across. Uh, once they are got all that down, then they'll start taking the piers out of the bottom. Um, and then they'll start <coughs> reclaiming the areas. So putting that parking area in. No pier in the water. No piers in the water, no. Nope. Beautiful. Yep. <coughs> I have a feeling they'll they'll eat, they'll knock them down they'll knock them apart, but they'll uh, they're you know your your uh, excavators have the bucket. They also have excavators that have uh, grabbers, so they'll probably go in, they'll tear it off, move it over, throw it in a pile, and they'll just keep doing that. They may jam so. it on one side so it diverts the water so they can work. They could do that too. Um, like I mentioned it earlier, there's, uh, there were plans for causeways into the river. Uh, project manager originally kind of said, I don't really want to build a causeway. So I think he's going to come around, come, into, come, at it, come at it in a different way. Yes? Uh, maybe you're going to get into this. Uh, 
why is it that the existing bridge couldn't be made into a walkway like they've done at Kinzu in Pennsylvania? Um, <clears throat> I, that, I think a lot of it political. Um, I think a lot of it also has to do with insurance and cost. Um, I would love to see that because I do like the bridge. I see somebody shaking their head they don't like that idea. Uh, yes? I belong to a group of railroad, ex-railroad uh, trailways, and they had a presentation showing the present bridge with a you know, mock-up of the new mm -hmm. bridge. It looked terrible. It does. It wasn't a free, you know, look at this jumble of uh, girders and everything. Yes, so. it does look terrible uh, like that. Um, I think a lot of it, remember I was saying a lot of people didn't want their wood bridge to go away. I think a lot of it's the same thing now. Uh, you know, one of the things I kind of battle with personally because I do like all these old things is I don't want to see any of it go. None of it. Absolutely, you know, it, it breaks my heart when I see you know, them tearing houses down because it's like that was a really nice old house. But if it's not useful, if it's not safe, if it's going to cost somebody money, there's no reason. Um, that bridge, it's, you know, people make the argument, well, you're not hauling freight anymore. But my, I, I will go back to Kinzu. Okay. Kinzu was uh, hauling passenger, car, passenger trains. They finally started re, uh, rehabbing some of it, but it was, I don't want to say it was too far gone because they would have been able to fix it, but in the process, it collapsed because of high winds. Um, and unfortunately, you now Kinzu was under the care of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. This would be under the care of the state of New York. And Whatever your political opinions are, uh, history is not a high priority. It really isn't. And they would not put the money into it to maintain it even to the standard of walking across it. Like you said, financially. Yes, it, unfortunately it does not. Unfortunately. Right, if you have somebody that's willing to put tons and tons of money into something, that's great, but nobody wants, everybody wants to see it stay, nobody wants to pay for it. Um, this kind of shows that whole skew back construction. Uh, they're actually knocking off uh, loose material from the blasting. Uh, you can really, you know, they're getting close to the bottom on that skew back there. This would be the west side. They're building that pier finally. More of the building. And then there's that skew back I was talking about. So that is, there's gonna be another, there'll be another one on the other side of the bridge, up the other, other, the other side of the gorge, sorry, and that will hold that whole structure, which in the next frame, you can see the size of that structure. These, these pictures came in just the past week. Um, that's just lowering one of the steel beams down. You can kind of see it, but I got a better picture of the approaches being built. Um, that's looking up at the pier. Um, you can see the steel for the approaches. This beam, well, this is actually that uh, angled beam out. You can see where that, you know, the size of this, this stuff. So, and, oh, one more. Uh, that's that, I believe this is the beam they were lowering down in that a couple pictures ago. And then there's building the approaches. And there we go. Thank you.